Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This tutorial explains the preference settings inside SmartSound Sonic Fire Pro 5. There's actually two different places preferences are stored. The first is under the File menu, under Project Settings. This allows you to specify the starting time code for your project. In this case, it defaults to 0 hours, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, and 0 frames. Just as an oh by the way, if you ever need to jump to a particular timecode, double click on the timecode window and you're able to specify what timecode you can jump your playhead to. Thinking of places to go, let's go up to the Sonic Fire Pro menu and go down to Preferences. There are six preference tabs. The first is the General tab. This checkbox allows you to turn on or off the startup sound. That's that opening chord you hear whenever the application starts. If you prefer not to hear it, simply uncheck the checkbox. When this checkbox is checked, whenever you start the application, the Express Track window will appear. If you always want to go directly to the timeline, open up a video and start to set markers, the Express Track window gets in the way, so turn it off. If you want to see all of the Scoring Edition windows, all five of them, that checkbox here, Show Timeline with New Document, needs to be checked. If you're always working with 30-second commercials and don't need music to default to one minute in length, simply type the time that you want the music to run. You don't need to use punctuation. If I type 3000, the system automatically assumes it's 30 seconds and no frames, and you're able to display what your frame rate is so it knows how to calculate time code. If you're working with HD and you want to make sure the system works with HD, use 2997 if you're shooting at 2997 or 5994 frames a second, and use 30 frames a second if you're shooting at either 30 or 60 frames a second. That way your time code will be accurate between the two projects. The Albums tab shows all the different music albums that are installed on your system, and if you click on it and click Get Info, it gives you a description of what the album is about a list of all the clips that are on the album, and when you click on a clip, it allows you to remove it, that is to say, erase it from your hard drive. Or, if it had not yet been copied to your hard drive, this would light up and you'd be able to copy it from the CD to your hard drive. The Folders tab specifies where metadata is stored. That's the top half here. That's the information about your files. And the second lower half specifies where music files are stored. By default, they're stored to your boot drive. But I find that it's a better way to work by storing music files to a second drive. So I've created a folder called Smart Sound Music, stored it to my second drive. Whichever drive you want Smart Sound to copy music files too, you need to select it and then set copy destination. In other words, select the folder and set copy destination. Notice this icon moves as you change it. That icon indicates to which hard drive music files are going to be copied. Again, I prefer having my music stored to a second drive. If you have an internet connection on the computer that you're using Sonic Fire with, this talks about how it accesses files. Do you want it to automatically download previews from the Smart Sound Store whenever you click on a file that you don't own? I like having this on. This is a good thing. Also, the metadata that's associated with the music that's on your disks sometimes needs to get updated. Not the music, but the information about the music. Having a check for updates makes sure that you always have the latest and greatest metadata. It doesn't upgrade often. But it's nice to know that it checks for updates whenever they're available. When you're exporting, Smart Recall is a very cool thing in that it allows us to reconstruct the project that we created our music from. With Smart Recall turned on, it makes it a whole lot easier to make changes because it automatically knows where all the clips came from. And when you're exporting, it has a default file naming convention, which you can change. Notice down here, instead of having it be the time code start minutes and seconds and frames, we can have it be duration minutes, seconds, and frames. So if I change this from start to duration, duration seconds and duration frames, it's going to then save this so I know exactly in the file name how long that clip runs. By the way, you notice that this is a semicolon, even though we're used to dealing with time as a colon. We can't actually use colons in file names, so they get remapped to be a semicolon. The network allows SmartSound to create what are called cue sheets. A cue sheet is a list of who the publisher is, how long the clip ran, so that if you need to, to provide cue sheets as part of submitting your programs to a network, SmartSound has a way of doing that automatically. 
And to take advantage of that, it needs to know exactly what piece of music that was that you're working with. So by having this on, which is the default, and I recommend it, it allows the automatic creation of cue sheets. And if this is important to you, you need to go to the Smart Sound website and take a look at how that works, because I've seen demos of it, and it is breathtaking to watch. That's a quick look at the preferences that are inside this release of Sonic Fire Pro 5. My name is Larry Jordan. Thanks for watching.